So in my last video I talked about why I'm choosing the Aurora toolset for making my RPG. If you've not seen that video yet, you can check that out on my channel. From here on out, we'll start covering the first steps of module creation and help you create your first quest. To reiterate, the goal of these videos is not to make you an expert in the Aurora toolset. Our goal is to equip you with the basic tools that you need to start creating your own storylines and maybe help you think about the way that you want to design levels, write quests, dialogue and create your NPCs. Because of this, I'm not going to do a deep dive on any specific features of the toolset until later on. Instead, I want to give you some variety and introduce a number of different features that will all come together in a playable module fairly quickly. If there is specific interest in any part of the toolset, then please leave a comment and I'll try to come back to that in a later video. So let's get started. First thing you'll want to do is open up your toolset. If you've not done this before, you can find it under the slash bin slash win32 directory of your Neverwinter Nights installation. I've left a full path from the Steam directory in the description for this video, so I'll give you a few moments to find it and launch it for the first time. Now it is located quite deep down in the directory structure, so I would recommend making a desktop shortcut to it so that you don't have to navigate to this directory every time. In the welcome screen, we would like to create a new module. The helpful wizard will now guide us through the first steps. We'll want to select a name for our module. I'm gonna call mine test module, but feel free to call yours whatever you wish. After that is created, we can then use the area wizard to create our first area. I'll show you how to create other areas later on, but area creation will always use this wizard to make things simpler for you, so it's a good idea to learn about how these are used. Over the course of the next few videos, we are going to create a simple quest for our hero, who will come across a merchant in the road. The merchant's caravan has been raided by goblins, and she will ask our hero to retrieve some goods that the goblins have stolen in exchange for a reward. If you're familiar with role-playing games, either digital or tabletop, you'll know that we're using quite a common quest trope here. This is typically called a gather or fetch quest. While there will be hostile goblins guarding the treasure, the main purpose of the quest is to retrieve the item rather than kill the goblins. We should remember this because this will become important in how we structure the quest and lay out the goblin camp. Okay, let's go back to our area creation. So in your area creation wizard, you will see a list of tile sets. Tile sets indicate the overall setting and are largely mutually exclusive. For example, you won't be able to use city tiles in the forest tile set or vice versa. For the purposes of this, we're going to use the rural tile set. So we'll scroll down to that and select it. Then give your area a name like forest road and press next. Now we will need to select a size. Medium is pre-selected and your height and width are eight by eight. This is a decent sized area for our purposes. You can customize your height and width up to a maximum of 32 by 32, but for now we can stick with eight by eight. Press next. Now you'll have the option to launch the area properties dialog here which handles some things like lighting, ambient music, and so on. For now, we're happy with the preset, so let's leave Launch Area Properties dialog box unchecked and make sure Open Area in Area Viewer box is checked and click Finish. Good. You can now close the module properties and take a look around your new area. Looks pretty basic so far, we've got a few rocks and trees, but nothing exciting as of yet. Before we move on, let's quickly take a look at the controls. So your left mouse button is going to be used for selecting. You can select tiles individually or click and drag to select multiple. 
when we start creating objects in the scene, you'll be able to do the same with them. Holding down your mouse wheel and moving your mouse will allow you to rotate around the scene and scrolling in and out with the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. The right mouse button will bring up additional menus of the selected object. Finally, holding down control and dragging with the left mouse button will let you move the camera around the area. Take a few moments to familiarise yourself with the controls here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to outline some borders to our area. We'd like for our quest to take place in a clearing in the forest. Since our quest giver is a merchant, it makes sense that she's travelling down a road and we want to position her a good distance away from the goblin camp. So what we will need to do is signal to the player that one, they're inside a forest clearing and two, there's a road running through it. On the right, you will see the terrain palette and this is the first palette that we're going to use. There are three subheadings here, features, groups and terrain. And all tile sets have these subheadings, but the contents will be different depending on the tile set that you use. We'll go through these in detail later on, but for now, let's open up the terrain subheading and select the trees brush. This gives us a blocky wall of trees that stops the player moving through it. To give the illusion of a clearing in the forest, let's use the brush to paint around the edges of our area. You may find it easier to get a top-down view. Remember, you can just adjust your camera by holding down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse and drawing all around the square using your left mouse button. If you make a mistake, don't worry. You can just leave that in for flavor or if you like, you can delete it using the grass brush and painting over it. Great. Now that you've got your basic structure, let's build our road. Select the road brush. You will see that unlike the forest and grass brushes, this one is rectangular and not square. This is because some brushes like roads and streams run through a square instead of covering it up completely. So let's place the road running across one side of the map. It doesn't matter which side you choose for this. The important part is that it's going to be on the opposite end of our upcoming goblin camp. You should see that your road will also interact with your forest tile where they meet. Once it's complete, you should see the road snaking off into the woods at each end and a blue rectangle cut into the two forest tiles where the road meets them. These are called area transitions, which will later allow us to move between different zones, but for now we can just ignore them. At this point, it's a good idea to test the module for the first time. You'll be doing this quite frequently as you start to write more complex tasks and scripts just to ensure that things are working as you intend. Testing also saves your changes, so it's a good idea to run this a lot so that you don't lose any of your work if your machine or program crashes. First though, we want to change where the player arrives. Select the Paint Start Location button and click on one end of your road. Now, we'd like the player facing forward along the road. You can do this by holding down the shift key and the right mouse button with the start location object selected and rotating the mouse to change the direction of the arrow. Fantastic, done that. Then let's go to build, test module or hit the F9 key to launch our build. Fantastic. We've got a fully functional little test area complete with road. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Join me next time where we'll be looking at creating and customizing our first NPCs. Thank you for watching.